Over the last 15 years, I've had the opportunity to review literally thousands of resumes. I've probably interviewed over 3,000 candidates and personally mentored over 400 students and helped them land jobs in some of the most prestigious areas of high finance. Today, I wanna to share some of the most common mistakes that I have seen in the interview process that I think most people don't really talk about. Because here's the thing, there are not a lot of jobs in venture capital. And in fact, there are not a lot of jobs in high finance. I read some stat the other day that said that there are as many jobs in venture capital as there are in professional sports. The likelihood of becoming a professional athlete where you get paid for playing a sport is just as likely as becoming a venture investor. There's just not that many jobs out there. And because of that, there are lots and lots and lots of people applying for those jobs. And so you really can't afford to make these kind of mistakes. But look, even if you're not applying for a job in venture capital, the things that I'm gonna talk about today are things that hopefully will be impactful as you're navigating your own personal career and interviewing for any type of really high-end, prestigious, exclusive type of opportunity. And be sure to stay to the end because I'm gonna cover the number one tip that is both a mistake that most people make, but also a way to differentiate yourself and ensure the maximum likelihood that you get the job you want. Mistake number one people aren't actually prepared for the interview. Now, this seems like an obvious one and like the, you know, Peter, lots of people talk about this. You gotta come prepared. But here's the thing, sometimes they think they're prepared. They've read the stuff on the website, they read the job description, you know, they did a little desktop research on the company. But in reality, they don't really understand the firm. They don't really understand the role and they don't really understand maybe like the industry or what it is that they need to be doing to help this company succeed. So one of my biggest pet peeves is I'll be interviewing somebody. I'll be like, hey, tell me about like what you want to do with your career, right? Because what we do as a venture fund is we're taking students that don't have a lot of experience and we're training them and teaching them how to get there. And so oftentimes students are doing this as a, as a short-term internship and then they want to do something else later on. And they'll be like, hey, I want to do investment banking. And I'll be like, awesome. Why do you want to do investment banking in your career? And they'll say, well, you know, I really like inv investing in stocks and bonds. And in my head, I'm thinking, but that's not what an investment banker does. They don't actually invest in stock and bonds, like not professionally. They may they may on the side personally. So for me, it's like this like signal that like they haven't, they don't really know what they want to do with their career. They don't really know what investment banking is. And if they don't really know what that is, do they really know what venture investing is or private equity? Probably not. They probably have been told that it's really cool and that they should be involved. But that is a very big difference from actually like absorbing as much information as you can about a given industry and job opportunity and really wanting to do it because you love it. It's exciting, it motivates you. And, and so that's the big differentiator. It's not just doing some desktop research. It's actually like coming to the conclusion for yourself that this is the place you really wanna be because you've done enough research, you've talked to enough people to really be able to distinguish what's for you, what's not, and see it as something that you really wanna do. And when you have achieved that level, it comes through in the interview process. You're able to answer questions at a deeper level and be more convincing that this is truly the place you wanna be and the place where you can actually add some unique value to the firm. How do you do this? My number one tip is find somebody that used to work at the company where you wanna work for. So if it's a venture fund, go find somebody that used to work at that venture fund. Ask them if you can buy them a coffee or hop on a Zoom call and pepper them with questions about the firm and the role. I did this years ago when I was applying for this job at this other venture fund. I reached out and I was able to find the guy that had been in that role before me. And we had a really great conversation and I came away from that really understanding exactly what the firm was looking for and what the role would entail. And now it turned out that while the role was interesting, it wasn't exactly as what I had thought it was going to be. And so it ended up not really being the right fit for me at that time. But I wouldn't have known that had I not had that conversation with that individual. So many people don't do that sort of thing. So take the time and do it. And I think you'll find most of the time, people are happy to chat, they're happy to help. The next big mistake that I see that interviewers make, particularly in venture capital, but really this could apply to anywhere, is not building enough FOMO in the interview process. Now FOMO is fear of missing out. What was interesting is recently I was interviewing these two different candidates for a more of a full-time role at our firm. And what was interesting to me is 
one candidate, you know, had a ton of great experience, looked amazing on paper, top tier credentials. Yet when I asked her about like, hey, tell me about some investment opportunities you're excited about. She kind of had a couple, but they weren't really related to our fund and the kind of investments that we make. Frankly, like they just weren't that compelling. She just didn't do a good job selling them. And when I interviewed this other woman, she came with uh, a list of several companies that sounded really exciting. She did a good job selling them. She also, you know, made it sound like she had unique access to these deals because of the reputation and the relationships that she had built. And by the end of the interview, I was feeling a little bit of FOMO. Like I was like, I kind of want to hire this person. Like I, I don't want them going to somewhere else. Like I want them in our firm because I want them to bring the deal flow that they have to our firm so we can participate in that, right? That's what you should be trying to build. You should be building this like feeling with the other interviewer that like, I don't want to let this person leave the interview without getting an offer because I don't want to miss out on such a high quality candidate. And what I found is that if you can create that level of FOMO with the interviewer, you have an extremely high likelihood of getting not just that, not an offer, but it puts you in a better negotiating position to get the offer you truly want. How do you do that? How do you build FOMO? Well, it goes back to my first mistake that most people make and not understanding the role and the company. If you understand that, then you can start bringing to bear like some of your expertise in the way you ask questions, the way you answer questions, and the way that you interact with the interviewer in general in such a way that they will see that you understand their business and can bring tremendous amount of value to it, lightening their load. And like, that's gonna be the biggest thing that's gonna separate you and start building that FOMO, right? You want their imagination cranking in terms of like, oh yeah, this person could help me with this and this and this and this, and they understand exactly what I need. Like that is a huge game changer. So what do you do to overcome mistake number three? Well, if you're applying for a job in venture capital, go find some really compelling deals. And here's the thing, if you can't find a really compelling deal or you don't want to, you know, and it's too hard, then that might be a really good indicator that like working in venture capital is not the thing for you. And if you're not applying for venture capital and it's something else, figure out what is the thing that those people really want, right? What are, what's something that you can solve for them that's hard for them to solve for themselves or that's a constant challenge for them and go try and tackle that challenge. And again, if you can't do it or you don't want to do it, then that's probably a good sign that this is not the industry for you. Mistake number three. And this is actually my number one mistake that I think people make in the interview process, especially for venture is they don't have a personal relationship with the venture fund before they even apply. And here's why that matters. So the typical venture fund, and we're talking like top tier, like solid venture fund, they're going to get literally probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of applications for one job. They'll have recruiters that are sending them stuff. They'll have PhDs that you know, individuals that have multiple PhDs from multiple Ivy League schools applying that look amazing on paper. They'll have all kinds of really interesting candidates. And no matter how good you are, I guarantee that there will be somebody on paper who looks even better. And so how do you stand out amongst all of those applications? You do it by having a personal relationship with the venture fund before you even apply. Or at a minimum, after you apply, you figure out some way to get your name and your personage, right? Like who you are as a person to be a known entity within that firm. Because here's the thing, when they look at all of those resumes, the number one thing that they're going to be looking for, I guarantee whether they know this consciously or subconsciously, is do I wanna work with this person? Part of it is like, can they bring value and add value to our firm? But the other part, probably equal, if not more important, is is this the type of person I wanna work with? And if they don't know you, then they're not gonna be able to know whether or not they wanna work with you. But if they do know you, you are going to stand out amongst all of the other candidates and have a massive, massive, huge advantage uh, over those other candidates. And in fact, if you talk to most venture investors today who had to go through that interview process, I think you will find that the vast majority, if not all of them, had a personal relationship with the firm before they ended up getting hired. Maybe it was they were sending deal flow to one of the partners there. Maybe it was the partner had invested in their company or the company that they were working for and built a relationship with that person over time. Maybe it was they reached out cold years before they even knew an opportunity might exist uh, to grab coffee 
and just to learn from that venture investor and start building a relationship and then found unique ways to add value to that relationship so that by the time an opportunity arose, they were top of the list for a call to get the opportunity to apply and participate. And you know how I know this is because if you talk to most venture investors, when they talk about their career progression, a lot of them will say, well, you know, it just kind of happened. But what they're not saying is they built this really interesting relationship with the venture investor earlier on. And so when the opportunity arose to get hired, the VC reached out to them to invite them to apply or to be part of the firm. The reason for this, and this is important, is because venture funds, for the most part, are small partnerships. So every new hire is critical to the culture. We all work in teams a lot. We work very closely making very big decisions. Because these firms are so small, it's important that they have really good alignment and cultural fit. And if there's a risk that they may not have that with an applicant, it's frankly just not a risk they're willing to take. And so they will pass by a candidate that looks better on paper, even one that might interview well for somebody that they know and trust is going to be a good fit for the organization. This is especially true if you want to actually be in venture as a career and not just as a like two years in and out analyst program, for example. But if you want to be partner track, so VP, principal, partner, general partner, and above, that is all going to be dependent on how good of a relationship you have with the firm before you even apply. Anyways, what are some of your top tips? Things that you've learned as you've gone through the interview process working with different companies? Throw them down in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you and the tips that you have. Uh, Maybe those are things that I can share in a future video and and I I will definitely respond and tell you what I think of some of your tips. Um, And of course, please like, subscribe if this video is helpful to you. Be sure to check out some of my other videos like this new video that I just released where I interview the team from North Cove who is currently raising money for their business on WeFunder. Thanks. (music) 